Did you survive the budget cuts? Draconian cuts. During the last debt ceiling fight, Democrats condemned. Cuts that are so severe, they will hurt farmers and ranchers, kids and families. And Republicans praised what they called reductions. It has historic reductions in spending. But both parties conned us. What they call cuts were just a reduction in their already planned spending increase. Leave it to politicians to call a 3.9% increase a cut. We're cutting spending and bringing the deficits down at the same time. No, they aren't. And now they're using tricks to spend even more. Call it an emergency. Done. Spend the money on whatever you want. Budget specialist Romina Bacha reports that the Senate's moving to increase spending beyond their agreed-upon caps simply by calling it emergency spending. They gave $296 million to NASA for emergency infrastructure. I mean, what's emergency infrastructure? That's not really a thing. It's just a way to plus up the NASA budget. They just call it an emergency and break the rule. Yes, and this is the problem. It's basically a huge slush fund. The DEA gets another $300 million for emergency salaries. How do they justify this? They don't even try anymore, John. Unfortunately, Congress has complete discretion over what it calls emergency spending. Some of the cuts we agreed to will be painful. This trick isn't new. After Congress forced President Obama to cut spending, they just labeled things like salmon fisheries and expansion of train service emergency funding. I don't think that's an emergency. It's not sudden. It's not urgent. Back then, I was worried about the politicians spending. Three plus trillion dollars. But now they spend twice that. Six trillion dollars. The agriculture department's up 27%. HHS, 46%. Interior, 89%. The Department of Education, which ought to be eliminated, is up 300%. By the end of this decade, spending will be at about $10 trillion. Who will be willing to lend that money to the U.S. government? That's the big problem. Fitch Ratings has downgraded the U.S. government's top credit rating. Downgrading U.S. long-term credit. At some point, the lenders will just say, no, this is a bad investment, and things collapse. The rating agencies and investors are catching on that the federal budget is highly unsustainable. People like you and me too have been screaming about this for years. And it's like we're crying wolf because nothing terrible has happened. The fact that it hasn't happened yet does not mean that it will not happen. It has to happen based on the math. That's the problem. The math does not work out. Pensions continue to be the best retirement vehicle because they provide the security workers need. Pensions, like Social Security, are the biggest problem. Governments promise seniors much more than governments will have. Unfunded pension programs aren't sustainable. But when anyone proposes cuts, people get very upset. Thousands of people taking to the streets after French President Emmanuel Macron forced through an unpopular bill that raises the retirement age from 62 to 64 years old. No wonder American politicians avoid even discussing cuts. No politician wants to do that because all most of them care about is getting reelected. Asking members of Congress who are running for office to reform old age entitlement programs is a bit like asking an astronaut in space to turn off his oxygen supply. So the Cato Institute suggests Congress create an independent commission that will do the cutting instead. That way, politicians can say, don't blame me, the commission made the cuts. America once did that to close some military bases. No base is exempt. The Base Realignment and Closure Commission in the 80s and 90s worked very well in helping Congress close obsolete military bases. The commission was given that power because even though the military wanted to close some bases, Congress refused. Members fought any closure in their state. In the middle of a war, you don't close a base like Rotten. The circumstances at our base are unique. By ignoring the self-serving politicians, the commission got 350 bases closed. This commission is not a rubber stamp. It was quite successful until Congress turned it off. Since Congress won't cut anything, and the president definitely won't. We and you are going to spend, we're going to spend $1.2 trillion over 10 years. That'll help bankrupt us. An independent commission may be our only hope. We need to do something.
before the debt blows up and gives us a real crisis. I know, I've warned about the debt explosion for years, and so far there's been no disaster except inflation. But you can only stretch your rubber band so far, eventually it will break. <laughs>